let me show you how we can use Lightroom's color mixer tools to fine tune the colors of our images. First, we will be applying the basic adjustments, then we will add some masking, and finally, we will do the color mixer adjustments. So if you're just here for the tutorial part, make sure to check the chapters to quickly navigate to this point. And now let's begin. As you can see, our raw file is rather bright. So we want to fix the exposure in the basic panel with some basic adjustments. First, I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This will boost the base saturation of the image and I want this image to be really, really colorful. Then let me bring down the exposure just to balance things a little more. I also want to introduce a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to drop the shadows very carefully. And at the same time, I'm going to bring up the whites. When adjusting these, make sure to look at the histogram because we don't want to introduce any clipping here. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks so we don't accidentally clip anything in the darkest areas of the image. So right around here looks good to me. All right, nice. So after adjusting the exposure, the next step for me is always to work on the white balance. I do think I want to make the image a little bit colder. And for shots like these, what I like to do as well is to bring down the tint, giving this whole image a very subtle greenish color cast. I think it works well with the yellow tones of the foreground and even the sky. So that's looking great. Then let's add a bit of texture, making this whole shot sharper. I'm also aiming for a very subtle autumn glow effect. That's the reason for me to bring down the clarity very gently, giving a soft glow over everything. And we can even bring up the dehaze for some further contrast. Just a little bit should be enough. Now I'm not going to touch the vibrance or the saturation slider, because if we change the colors globally for this image, this would be way too much. We're going to use the color mixer later on to target specific colors and thus get much nicer looking color tones. So that's the image after the basic adjustments. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see it's looking much, much better with the dropped exposure and the colors do look much more intense already. Now, what we will do next is some masking to target a few areas more locally. And one big problematic area for this scene is the sky. Because I was using a polarizing filter, you can see some polarizing bending going on in here, which means this spot of the sky is darker than the right side because of that polarizing filter. This is something we can fix with a bit of masking. So I would say let's start with a simple sky mask. I want the sky to have much more contrast with really nice bright white clouds and a dark blue in the back. So I'm going to target the whole sky and I'm going to bring up the contrast. This will already help separate the white clouds from the dark blue sky in the back. I'm also going to increase the temperature very, very gently because at the moment the sky is a little bit too much on the blue side. So this way we can fix the color cast in the sky. I also think I need to bring down the tint further for this. It will give the sky a really good looking aquaish color tone and this cyan color tone works really, really well together with the yellows of the foreground. So I'm really happy with how this is looking. I'm also going to bring down the saturation. I want the top part of the sky to be a little darker and the bottom part of the sky to be a little brighter. So that's the next thing I wanna work on. Let me create another sky mask. Of course, we don't want to affect all skies, so let's subtract a linear gradient and I'm going to subtract pretty much all of the top part of the sky. So we are only left with the bottom part. Here, that's where I wanna increase the brightness. So let's bring up the exposure and this will add a very nice looking gradient going from bright to dark in the sky. I just think it's a great effect. Let's maybe even drop the dehaze, kind of dropping the contrast in this area of the sky. All right, that's looking great. Now the area around these trees on the right side might look a little bit blown out, but don't worry, I'm going to remove those trees later on. So this area will look much nicer later. Now about that polarizing bending effect in the sky. We need to fix the left side, which I want to make darker. Therefore, I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm clicking somewhere right here on this side. By default, you can already see some parts of the left side aren't selected, but we need to fine tune that selection. And therefore we are going to use the refine slider and let's bring it down a little. 
kind of filtering out the darker blue tones this way. Of course, this is not enough, so we need to further modify this selection. Let's click on Subject, and I'm choosing a linear gradient, and I try to get rid of most of the left side. So maybe like this, and I also need to subtract the bottom part like this. Now let's see if this works. What I'm going to do is to bring down the exposure, trying to make it as dark as the skies on the left side. Okay, I can also try to bring down the blacks. Bringing down the blacks is a really good way to do this because this won't affect the clouds too much. In fact, let's actually bring up the exposure a notch and instead bring down the blacks a little more. Okay, that's already looking quite good. I want to continue working on that area using another linear gradient. So let's cover more of the right side than we do on the left like this. And I'm going to bring up the contrast. All right, let's also try bringing down the blacks a bit. Wonderful. Now those areas are much closer to each other. Maybe let's rotate this a little. But that's looking good. I want to use another sky selection. And again, I want to target the bottom part of the sky. Let me subtract another linear gradient so we cover the area like this. I still want to make it a little brighter, so I'm going to very carefully bring up the exposure. And I'm also going to very carefully raise the blacks. All right, that's looking really nice. Now I'm quite happy with the sky, but there's one more thing I want to do. I want to target the clouds specifically. So I'm using a color range mask and I'm clicking right in here in the brightest cloud. I'm also going to bring down the refine slider so we only really affect those clouds. And let me subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom like this. Now what I want to do with this selection is to make the clouds brighter. So I'm going to bring up the exposure and thus we can make the clouds pop. One thing that's bothering me is the color of these clouds, which should be pure white, but we do have some bluish tint in there. So I'm going to bring down the saturation. We can just nicely fix that. I do think I need to adjust the color range mask a little more. Maybe let's bring up the refine a little more like this. Okay. Of course, we also want to work on the foreground. So let me create another sky selection. But of course, since we want to work on the sky, what we need to do is to click on invert. And just like that, we get a perfect selection for the foreground. I want to carefully drop the exposure a little more. And then I want to increase the whites, adding some more brightness to the foreground like this. Wonderful. Then I also want to play around a little bit with light and shadow. You can see some shadow right on that hill in the background. This is what I want to target. So let's see, how can we do that? I'm going to use a linear gradient and I'm trying to place it right along the edge of that hill in the back, like this. Then we need to subtract and let's do select sky and we need to subtract, let's say with a brush and I'm just getting rid of the trees in the back, which we don't want to affect. Let's bring down the feather for a more precise selection here. Okay, then what I want to do is to emphasize the shadow by bringing down the exposure very gently. Let's raise the contrast a bit. Let's bring down the shadows. All right. And we can also target the brighter hill right here in the foreground. So I'm going to use another linear gradient and let's see how we can target this. I'm trying to really only affect the edge right here. And I don't want to affect the very near foreground, so I'm going to take out the part from that using another linear gradient like this. Now we need to subtract the brush and I'm going to use a rather hard edge, but I wanna introduce some feather to this brush. Now I'm going to click right above this hill once. Then I'm going to the next point above that hill, hold down shift, click in there once again and you can see how we're creating this straight line subtracting from this linear gradient. This is super important just to create a nice edge separating the hill in the foreground from the hill in the background. Then let's continue. I'm going to click in here once again and let's follow this hill clicking in here while holding down the shift key to create a line. And this way I'm working my way through that mask. 
All right, I think this is looking good. Now we want to introduce brightness to add light for this hill in the foreground. So I'm going to carefully bring up the exposure and that's looking good, nice. Then let me use an objects mask. Let's activate the rectangle select mode right here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle around the trees in the back. That's looking good. I want to make them brighter, giving them some more details by bringing up the exposure. Let's also bring up the shadows and the whites. And let's add some clarity. I'm going to subtract using a brush, making it very soft because there are areas selected of the sky, which makes it look a bit weird. So I'm gonna get rid of that, doing it this way. All right, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks. So that was our image with the base settings applied. And that's the image after the masking adjustments. As always, huge transformation. But now we can start focusing on the colors using Lightroom's color mixer. So let's open it up. The color mixer was formerly known as HSL, which means hue, saturation and luminance, because we can change the hue, saturation and luminance of all these eight specific color tones, which makes it really, really powerful. Let me demonstrate this with the hue first. So in this image, the yellow tones do have too much of a green color cast. Using the hue adjustments, we can actually fix that. So let's say we want to give the yellows a more intense, warm, color tone. We're going to pick the yellow slider and drag it down. You can see how all the yellow tones of the image turn more and more orange as we go down further and further, making them almost look red if we go all the way down. Of course, that's not what we want. We want to keep the changes subtle. So in this case, I'm going to drop it just a little bit like this, neutralizing the green color cast in the yellow parts of the image. And then in the sky, there oftentimes is a subtle purple color cast. This is something that's driving me personally really, really crazy and I really hate seeing this. So my go-to method to fix purple color cast in the sky is again in the hue settings. I'm going to pick the purple slider and I'm going to drop it all the way down. This will make the purple color tones look much colder, giving them a blue tone and thus you are getting rid of that purple color cast in the sky. What we can also do, we can use the hue sliders a little more creatively, in this case, giving the sky more of a cyan look, which again fits just really, really well with the yellow tones of the foreground. Therefore, we're going to take the blue slider and we're going to drop it slightly further to the left, making it look more cyan this way. Of course, this is a personal choice. You could even go much crazier and create a kind of early Instagram look if you want like this. But of course, that's way too much for me. So let's bring it down again. I think something like this is looking pretty solid. So now we have adjusted the hues of the image. Let me turn off the color mixer so you can see the difference from before to after. This is a very subtle change. But as mentioned earlier, this is to fine tune colors of the image. I rarely use it to apply drastic changes. So next up, we wanna work on the saturation. For this image, there are three main colors we can work with. We have the yellow tones, we have the blue tones, and we have the green tones. The important one for me is yellow. This is what I wanna make stronger. So I'm going to bring up the yellow saturation, making the field in the foreground more intense this way. I also really love the green tones of the image. I think they could use some more saturation as well. So let's bring up the green saturation, like this. The saturation of the sky is a little bit overdone at this point, but luckily for us, we can easily fix that in the color mixer. We can use the aqua slider and the blue slider to balance this saturation a little more. That means I'm going to start by bringing down the blue saturation very gently. And let's also bring down the aqua saturation as well. Instantly, it looks much more balanced with the colors. Again, I want to make use of the purple slider and bring it down all the way, which will mostly affect a very tiny amount of the sky. But I want to be safe and just get rid of all these ugly purple tones in there. For the same reason, I'm going to bring down magenta, but I don't think there's much going on. I just want to be safe with those two. All right, so we have adjusted hue and saturation. Now let's take a look at the luminance. Luminance will affect the brightness of these color tones. 
but it will also passively affect the saturation. That means if I bring down the yellow luminance, we will make the foreground darker. But as we make it darker, we will also kind of increase the saturation in here. On the other hand, if you make it brighter, we're going to lose saturation in the yellow tones. So that's something important to keep in mind. Now what I want to do, I want to make the field in the foreground a little more glowing. That means I want to make it brighter and therefore I'm going to very gently boost the yellow luminance. Maybe like this. I think that's great. At the same time, I think we could use a little more contrast and I'm going to use the green tones to add that. I'm going to bring down the green luminance. This will make the green parts of the foreground darker and it will also affect the trees in the back. And then I'm also going to use the aqua and blue tones to work on the sky. So I want to bring down the blue luminance, making the top part of the sky darker and also giving it back some more saturation. And at the same time, I'm going to use the aqua luminance and erase it. This will make the bottom part of the sky a little brighter, since the bottom part mostly consists of these aqua tones. All right, and that's pretty much it for the color mixer adjustments. Again, let me turn off the color mixer to see the difference from before to after. Again, very subtle changes, but it really helps to fine tune the colors of your images. Now there's not much left to do. What I want to do is to go into the calibration tab, and just bring up the blue primary saturation because I think it looks really, really good. And then let's sharpen the image, open up the details panel. I'm going to drop the radius, increase the details, hold on the alt key while applying the masking stuff so we can nicely target the main parts of the image. And let's apply some sharpening. All right, done. And that is the image after the Lightroom adjustments. Now we still need to clean up the shot a bit. I'm going to do this in Photoshop just because it is faster. So right click on the image, go to edit in and choose open this smart object in Photoshop. I'm going to duplicate this layer to have a backup. Then we need to rasterize this layer and therefore right click and choose rasterize. Then let me use the spot healing brush and we want to zoom in and let's get rid of these trees and just painting over it should work nicely as you can see. Now for these things I'm going to use uh, the remove tool which is a little more precise. So I'm just roughly painting over those spots. And there we have the finished image. So I guess this video will be a little bit longer. I'm really not sure if I should go into more details when recording these videos or if you want to have them a little bit faster, keeping them shorter. So please let me know in the comments what you prefer so I can adjust accordingly. Also, if you have any questions about the editing, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you so much for watching this video.